gospel. Yeah. It's with the good news right. that I am saved by grace yeah. through yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the finished work on the cross. Yeah. And because of that, my heart has been changed. Yeah. And the way I act and the way I treat you yeah. gotta line up with what God says in his word. How do we just live by faith? By the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. By knowing the word. By getting in the word. By studying the word. Yeah. Because faith is the substance of the things hoped for. Yes. The evidence of things not seen. That's right. That's right. But you got to know what you, that might call. You got to know what you know that you know. Yes. 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 And stand for it. Live by it. Be an example to those that don't know Jesus. Yes. Here's my close. I want you guys to think with me. Y'all got that, right? Yes, yeah, yes. You got a relationship with the gospel. Uh, yeah. You know what the gospel yeah. is. You know that in order to receive the gospel, you must confess that Jesus come into your heart. Yeah. Then you receive that good news of the gospel that Christ, lo God loved you so much that he sent his son Jesus yeah. to be abused and uh, died on the old rugged cross, the cross of shame. Yeah. You yeah. accept that, and now your heart has been changed, and now you're struggling with living in the right fellowship with God and with people yes. so that you be tight with your relationship with God. Yeah. In the South where I grew up, we sung a song, it says, count your years as months. Mm -hmm. Count your months, help me on the ghost, as weeks. Yeah. Count your weeks as days. Yeah. Right. Count, your, count your hours as minutes. Uh -huh. Count your minutes yeah. at seconds. Because yeah. any day now, uh -huh. we'll be going home. Yeah. So I want y'all to get about the year, yeah. the month, yeah. the week, yeah. and the day. And I want y'all to go into second, into seconds with me. Someone just died just that second. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was a broken left relationship left behind. So, oh, another one just died just then. And there was a broken relationship with a father and a daughter because he left up second. So another one just died second. Another one just died just then because the mother and the daughter didn't get along. They didn't get the chance to recognize, oh, another second, another one just died. Husband and wife, because uh, husband just died, and husband and wife, second, oh, another second, another one just died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are y'all with me? Oh, yeah. Every second, oh, another one just died. Son and mother didn't get to recognize. Oh, another one just died right there. Uh, oh, another one just died right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dig it, dig it just to reconcile with God. Oops, another one just died right there. People are dying. And every breath that we take is the same. So just imagine that every time you breathe in and out, somebody dies. All day long. And what is the second roll by? He called it a little shot. Hallelujah. And the person that you have an alt with that wronged you so many blue moons ago <coughs> dies. Yes, 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 yes. And you don't get a chance to say I'm sorry. Yes. To reconcile. To let it go. I'm sorry is not for them, it's for you. You're not going to be held accountable for what they did. You're going to be held accountable for how you handled what they did. Yeah. Seven, how many people? How many seven just bad? How many people just died when their relationship was still broken? No, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. If you stop and look at the people that you're mad with, God has already blessed you beyond them anyway. Yeah. I can look at my kids' dad. Come on, sis. God has truly made it right with me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Think about it. Sickness, disease, cancer, because of unforgiveness. Every second. Okay, how many people, how many seconds with that? How many people just died? With broken relationship, unforgiveness. Wow, wow. wow. Your relationship with the gospel requires you to make fellowship right with your brothers and your sisters. 
stop coming to church and faking and shaking it on Monday, blowing up my phone because you mad with somebody that said something that did something. I'm going to just let y'all go. I'm going to notice right now. I'm on a phone hiatus. I'm going to answer my phone for 30 days. Go talk to the person that you're upset with yeah. and make it right. Yeah. And call me in 30 days and say, first lady, Dr. Clark, I got a testimony. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, 30, I, you, you, you only knew uh, Elder Childs. My, my, my. How many phone calls I get? Yeah, yeah. How many times I'm begging and pleading with folks to let yesterday go so that you can live, so that you can be forgiven, and God will take care of the rest. Your pain, the hole in your heart is not going anyway, anywhere until you forgive my no, she ain't right. No, daddy wasn't right from molesting you. No, your uncles wasn't right from molesting you. No, your sisters wasn't right for lying on you. No, they're not right, but let it go so you can live. Talk to us again. Forgive. Yeah. 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 All our lives, we pray God forgive me as I forgive others. Hello. How many times did we tell that lie? My God. <laughs> If he's going to forgive me the way I forgave mother, yeah, if he's going to forgive yeah, you the way you forgave mother, how is it that God is forgiving you? Think about it. I can't answer it. Yeah. I know you hurt. Yes, yes, yes. I know it was painful. They did it to me, too. Yeah, yeah. I remember one time, I only said one time, because there was quite a few times that I was raped. Yeah. I remember one time yeah. that I talked myself out of it just who, about who my daddy was. I'm talking about my earthly father. So you can get yourself out of a lot of things by telling people who your heavenly father is. Right. But I told him, I said, okay, yeah. it's two of them. If that's what y'all want to do, both of y'all know my daddy. Y'all know how Tom Stewart feels about his children, especially his oldest daughter. So go ahead and do what you want to do, but I would, I would ask you to kill me. Because yeah. if you don't, you die tomorrow. Yeah. And they knew I was right. I got, my daddy didn't play. And that's how I feel about my heavenly father. Yeah, he don't play. You go ahead and do whatever you think you want to do to me. Whatever you want to say about me. Because my daddy don't play. Yeah. He don't take care of me and you. Yeah. So if you are your daddy's girl, your daddy's child, let the evilness go out of your heart and let God mend your broken heart so that you can see the vengeance of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. A relationship with the gospel will help you do that. Yes, Lord. Because yes. it's all in the word. Even if you can't see what I'm saying, it's faith that you're operating in. Yeah. Yeah. Believe the impossible. Ooh, how many seconds has passed? How many people have died? Yes. And no forgiveness. Yes. Wow, wow. No chance to repent. Yeah, yeah. I've known people on their deathbed that was evil right up to their very last breath and didn't repent and do it. Wow. Yeah. Really sad. If I'm getting ready to go home, call everybody that think I did something then so I can say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. When I stand before a holy God, right. yeah. I don't want to hear any of that. I just want to hear him say, servant. Servant. My good and faithful servant. Well done. Yes, yes, yes. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on, baby. Yes. I got I got a castle in the sky for you. Yes. I'm gonna make you ruler over much. That's what I'm working for. Yes, yes, yes. So that's why I went through that exercise with my deacons and my ministers in the office. Because you know it within our conversation and, and uh, us hanging out together, I know I just said some things to offend other child. I apologize already, but I wanted to do it today. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the power of this message can come yeah. forward so people can be helped. I don't want to lose my anointed evangelist. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Y'all can have my house, my car, my money, my even my children, but I don't want to lose my anointing. Right. And unforgiveness, confession. Now, people will hold you hostage by what you did. That's their problem. I confess. Yeah. I am God. I repented it to the Lord, then I'm going to turn away from it and I'm not going to do it no more. My, my, my. Because if I have to be anointed, I'm yet human. Yeah. 
if to, if a war between two and nine by two. Yeah. 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 That old man is there. If you okay. step on my toe just the right way, you yeah. just about will see a surely you ain't never seen it. You pray that you never see it again right up the top. Because she's buried down in there. But if you push my toe the right way for yeah. the right amount of time, yeah. she yeah. is coming up. But all the Indian, Irish, French, and Italian. Yeah, all right. We don't even throw the black on there. That's enough by itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. <laughs> Thank God for saving me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody mad but the devil? Nobody mad but the devil. Anybody mad but the devil? Yes. So my desire, God's desire, as as you reflect on your relationship with the gospel, yes. that you would go home and you would start thinking in your mind yes. and in your heart, yes. what is it that I'm still carrying yes. that I need to let go? Yes. That I need to call and say I'm sorry? Yes. 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 That I need to ask, oh, it's so free. You might lose about five or 10 pounds. <laughs> Hallelujah, my time is well spent. I'm looking around the room and everybody in the room that I see, everyone is saying everyone has a relationship, but maybe your relationship has been a real little rocky because your fellowship wasn't right and you want to come down to this altar and you want to get it right, you want to make it right, or maybe you just want to think about it and go home and be right. No chairs. No chairs. I just want no people to come. But if you got the message, you have your homework assignment. Yes, amen. You know what it means to be in a relationship. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. A relationship with God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm like God, brother. And I know who that Paul said, brother, my heart is out, and my desire for Israel is that they might be saved. Yes, Paul. Yes, yes, Paul. For our bad little record, but they have a seal of God and our according to knowledge. Because they need ignorant of God's knowledge, going about to establish their own God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness. It is not my desire that anyone wants to die no. unsaved. Right. And think about it. Maybe you got the heart right and you're saved and you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, but forever is a long time to be empty handed. Don't let broken relationships steal your treasure that God has stored up for you in heaven. God bless you. You know, a relationship with the gospel, as she was preaching, I began to empty. I, I don't think you heard. As she was preaching, I began to empty. Oh, I don't think you heard me. Let me just say it again, Facebook family. As she was preaching, I began to empty. Hallelujah. I emptied burdens. I emptied baggage. I emptied things that I have been keeping that was not essential. Can I just say it again? There are some things that have been bothering you for a long time, Facebook family and those that are here. And after listening to that, what it means to have a true relationship with God simply means someone have to be the bigger person to say that, Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah. And, if, and, and if, if pride is in your heart or in your mind, yes, Jesus. You, you can never get to the place where God is taking you. Especially leaders, I'm talking to all of those that are here in the temple yes. and outside the temple. If, if you're a leader Lord, and you're carrying Lord, something, Lord, Lord, and, and you need to be honest and open with yourself, to get true deliverance yes. and to allow God to come in and have a true relationship. A true relationship really comes when you're open and honest yes. and when you learn how to communicate yes. with the Father. Yes. 
And Master Pat, you don't even have to communicate because one of his natural attributes is that he's omniscient, meaning he's all knowing. He already knows your thoughts before you think of them. But if you're here and you're a leader and you know that, Lord, I'm a leader, you call me, I'm a deacon, I'm a minister, I'm an elder. I'm a preacher, I'm an evangelist, I'm a missionary. Whatever your title is, you want to give yourself. If you have been holding God hostage in the relationship, that's what happens. You hold God hostage in the relationship when you refuse to allow him to lead you. He want to lead you. God want to feed you. He want to nurture you. He want to deliver you. Yes. He want to set you free. Yes. But, but you know what? He ain't going to break you into your door. No. He said, I stand at your door. Do you hear me? I'm speaking through my presence. Do you hear me? I'm speaking through my anointing. Do you hear me? I'm speaking through the word yes. that was just delivered. Right. Yes. Do you hear me? My, my, my. And see, we, we got issues because we'll leave here today, talk to one of our family members, and have a bad. Don't let no family member allow you to think negative about anyone. I don't yes. care who it is. Right, right, right. Let me just say it. Don't allow your family member to influence you yes. to become negative. Because God in a relationship, you if you love in a relationship, I'm not talking about that phileo love. Jesus told Peter, lovest thou me more than these? Feed my lambs. Lovest thou me more than these? Feed my sheep. The two components of love that Jesus was talking about, he spoke here in a higher sense of love and Peter responded, not here, he responded in the Lord's sense of love. Yeah. He said, lovest thou me, agape? Peter said, yeah, I love you, phileo. That was a brother love. He said, I wanted Peter to understand that he needed to rise from the phileo to the agape, which is sacrificial in a relationship. Right, right, right. If you're here today, and this is business, and I, I thank you for that message, my wife, and I thank God for using you, you because I'm going to be honest with you. The gospel will break the yoke yeah, of Lord. sin. Yeah, yeah. And if you're here today, I don't want any chairs, but if you're a member, a non-member, yes. and you know that you've been exposed to something that have taxed yeah. your relationship with God, you have been involved in something that have compromised your relationship with God. You have been, and I'm not trying to judge you, but we need to judge ourselves. And we need to evaluate and do an assessment of ourselves. And if you want to really leave here fresh, revived, restored, rejuvenated, regenerated, replenished, regurgitated, oh my God. If you want to leave here changed and have a mind that is made up and you can stand with anyone now, any family member, any friend, I want you to be bold enough and courageous enough to take off your title just for a moment, to take off your pride just for a moment. And I want you to just stand here because pastor want to pray for you. Not because you're bad, but because God is ready to do something. I see a movement. Oh, I see a movement. I see a movement. And God is saying right now that you don't even have to tell me or first lady anything. God has already forgiven you. He's already restored your relationship. As you begin to just stand up and walk up front, God is in the restoring business, the healing business. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. 
He's in the business to make it right. See, we, we, we get caught up. See, some preachers get caught up in pride. Oh, I know this. And they talk about another preacher. They judge another preacher. They get with other preachers to talk about a preacher. Well, I'm praying that God would help you. Because you just handicap your blessing in your ministry. The Bible says, if God sets you free, not the enemy, but if God sets you free, you are free indeed. I believe these that have come for that God is getting ready to do something. And I'm praying that God would restore their relationship. I, I, you don't need to share with pastor or executive pastor the fact that you took us in suggests that you don't tell all those that try to feed yes. negative into you that I don't want to hear that garbage no more. I'm not going to listen. Sometimes we have to be like the old race horse. Because we all have a goal, sister. And our goal is to make heaven our choice. And sometimes, as a Christian believer, whatever position you held in the church yes. is the fact that be like that old racehorse that's running the race yes. to win. Sometimes you have to put on spiritual blinders because we see too much, we hear too much, the enemy comes in and we allow him to feed into our spirits. But right now, God is going to deliver you and set you free right now. And when you leave this place, you're going to be renewed. You're going to be restored. You're going to be revived. You're going to be refreshed. You're going to be reconciled. You're going to be given the ability to be free. There's nothing more in your mind yes. to be liberated and free. Yes. The huddles now will not be huddles of gossip and negativity, but the huddles will be of joy and edification, yes. which is building up each other. Yes, Lord. Bow your heads right now, all those that are coming. Yes, God. All those that really believe in God, point your hands toward these individuals. Yes. God is getting ready to do something. Right now, Lord, this brother who is standing right here, you know him by name because you created him, you made him. And I'm praying right now, Lord, as you stand here in your spirit and presence, that you would forgive him and use him mightily for your glory. He's right now, whatever he do, he want to be a leader for you. He want to be a blessing to you. And he wants you to use him for your glory. I'm praying from the crown of his head yes, to the sole of his feet. Yes. That whatever the past have been, that you're right now refreshing him. You're forgiving him. Yes. And you're giving him a new opportunity to get it right. Yes. Brother, the Lord have heard your prayer. And right now, I'm going to tell you as a messenger of God, yes. your past has been forgiven and God has renewed your presence and he has opened up a future for you. And I'm going to pray as I remove my hand from your forehead that you go sit down because God has heard your prayer and you have been renewed. God bless you. you can go take your seat. Sister, right now, oh, hallelujah. You've been through so much, but you persevered. You've been through a lot in life, but you've hung in there. You've been abused, you've been misused, you've been talked about, you've been criticized. People are still feeding you garbage, but right now, God is restoring you. He's renewing your spirit, your spirit in him. And right now, Lord, I'm praying for this sister that you would touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. As if this is a new day for her. That all that happened in the past is now past in the sea of forgetfulness. And the blood of Jesus Christ is renewing her right now and set her free right now, Lord. Oh, right now, Lord, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Let that joy be prominent. Let your gospel be prominent. Speak to her heart. Speak to her soul. Speak to her mind. Protect her from her harm and danger and all that would divide and feed garbage into this clean vessel of God. Oh, right now in the name of Jesus. You can go take your seat. 
Your sister standing right here, Lord. Oh, God, right now, I'm praying that as she ventured into your future, that you would let her know that everything is all right and your past have been forgiven. And the fact that you're standing here right now, God is ministering unto you. He has renewed you to a place in him that is only you and him can stand in. And I'm praying, Lord, that you would touch this sister. Don't take all the guilt out of her mind. Take all the burdens that she's been carrying. All the negative that have been feeded into her ear and her spirit. And I'm praying that you would renew her, refresh her, fill her with your spirit. Thank you, Lord. I, I know it's done. Oh, you've given her a new opportunity, a new slate. Her slate is clean. And the future is certain. Go and be, sister. God bless you. Brother, you stand here not because you've been so good, but because God has been so good. Let me just say it again. You're standing here, brother, not because you've been so good, but God has been so good. Right, right. And you realize because of his love and because of his grace, you want to perfect the man, the ministry that he has given you. And you want to disinfect everything that tries to contaminate you. God is doing a work in you right now. From this day forward, you're going to be all right. Then. He's building a hedge of protection around you so the enemy can't even get to your heart right now. God going to use you for his glory. Mold this vessel on it right now, my brother. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And God, help him to stand even when Sunday has passed. Help him to stand. Even when he don't feel like standing, help him to realize that from this day forward, 